that I won't do anything, right? I mean, every day I depend on the Spirit and I do a whole lot of things. It says I don't look to the strength of the flesh to do anything that I do. I depend on the Spirit. First of all, let me just say, you know, that I'm, I'm, I, my heart grieves that you, that you have to deal with that. And, and God's does too. Um, and it isn't as it ought to be. And when the scripture talks about all things work to the good for those who love God, it's not saying God did this to you so he could work something good in you. That's a lie from the pit of hell. What that's saying is, even though you've encountered tribulation in this world, God has conquered the, the world. He's overcome the world in Jesus. And so what that means is he's done something in Jesus that if you can get your eyes set on, that word of what he's done in Jesus will strengthen you your whole body, your whole mortal body, as you walk through this earth dealing with that. And it will strengthen you in your soul. Now, that doesn't mean that you might not ever feel tired, you might not ever feel run down, it doesn't mean you might not ever feel weak, but what it means is that when you feel that happening, God will strengthen you on the inside and uphold you, right? To do what needs to be done. And so if I was you, I mean, I can only imagine, and so I'd probably be talking to God daily about that. Yeah. Because daily, that would probably be me a smack in the face. So daily, I would be being honest to God about the weakness that I felt. Daily, I would be being honest to God about how this hurts my heart and how sometimes it can. I would just be honest with him about what I'm going through, right? I would be honest no matter what it is. I mean, listen, there was times where I just told God, listen, man, I know you said that you'll never leave nor forsake me, but I sure feel forsaken right now. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and if you're angry, you just you just talk to God. And what happens is... You, you get out your heart towards God, but then you start talking to God about what he's done to conquer death. You start talking with God about what he's done to set this straight, about how God has not turned his back on your child and how God is going to cause your child to overcome this thing and that your child will live all eternity for all eternity without this thing. And Romans talks about that. It says there's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. It's not talking about from God. It's talking about death tried to condemn all of us. And so that, that thing you're encountering in your life, it's trying to speak a word of accusation to you. That's right. That's right. It's trying to condemn you. It's trying to break you down. It's trying to tell you you're separated from life. It's trying to tell you you're separated from God. Hath God really said? Look. Is God really with you? Look. You see, that death is trying to say a word to you about you, your child, and your relationship with God. Now, what Paul said was, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk after the flesh and not after the Spirit. Okay, so what that means is those who walk after the Spirit, they'll see that the Spirit of life has conquered death. And they'll see that they're partakers of that Spirit of life. And that Spirit of life will quicken them on the inside when their tribulation comes against them and will tell their hearts that that tribulation can't overcome you. That tribulation is not a word that you're separated from God. Because we saw all your tribulation come against the Christ. And we saw the Christ come out of the grave. And we saw it was by the hand of God. And that's why Paul goes in this long diatribe where he, where he talks about, well, we'll just read it real quick. Those are some of my favorite passages. <laughs> But there's salvation for you from your weakness in these passages, the one you bring up. And I just want you to know, I feel like God wants you to know, the fact that you even quote those verses is revelation that God's already ministering to your heart about this thing. He already sees that, that you need to be upheld and that you need strength. He's already felt compassion for you a long time ago. He's already felt that I'm going to be with her and hold her up in this. He already wants you to know that he's working in your child. But Romans 8, we'll get down to the end. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. What he's saying is, the, the tribulation I've experienced as an apostle, yeah. um, it can't condemn me because I have Christ in me, the hope of glory. Yes. <laughs> I have a promise of glory and immortality. Right. And so this death can't tell me I'm separated from God because I, ha I have his spirit in me. That's what he's saying there. Okay, for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Whoa, we'll go down here. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. You're feeling weak right now. The Spirit wants to help your infirmities. How does the Spirit want to help your infirmities? He wants to guide your heart into the truth that death has been conquered and that this thing that's happening to you can never separate you from the love of God or what He's done in Jesus to conquer your death. So that's what he says. Let's see. 
What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? You see, death wants to try to accuse you. Just like it accused Jesus. When Jesus was hanging on the cross with death on him, what did the Pharisees say? You're not the son. God's left you. Right? That's what these circumstances want to try to tell you. They want to lay a charge to you. Okay? But God's justified you as his child in Jesus. And then look at what he says. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. It's saying that death has tried to come and condemn us. Right. But then Christ came and condemned death. Yeah. <laughs> death was trying to speak a word about us and our life and our life with God. But then Christ came and condemned that word. Mm -hmm. How did he condemn that word? He took our death into himself and then God come and raised him out of the dead. Exactly. Oh, raised him from the grave. Exactly. So he, Christ condemned that word. Right? right? Mm -hmm. And so then, then listen to what he says. And it's Christ who even sitteth at the right hand of God right now, making intercession in our hearts every time the death and tribulation in this world comes against us and tries to tell us we're separated from God yes. or that we don't have life. For we see that Christ is seated at the right hand of God and Christ condemns that word. That's how he intercedes in our hearts. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation our distress, our persecution, our famine, our nakedness, our peril, our sword. What he's saying is, none of those things we encounter in this world can ever be a word that can condemn us again. None of those things can ever be a word that tell us we're separated from God. They can never be a word that tell us God's forsaken us. They can never be a word that tell us God doesn't love us because we see that God came and condemned that word right. when he brought Jesus out of the grave and sat him at the right hand. Right? So as you're talking with God about the weakness that you feel, you want to include in your prayer time with God, and prayer time for me is just talking with God. You want to talk to God about what he's done to conquer what ails you and your, your child. Right? Mm -hmm. You want to tell God, Father, I know you've conquered this thing that's coming against my child. I need yeah. you to persuade my heart so I can see her through the eyes of life and not see her through the eyes of death. Okay, And what can then happen is, is you can begin to see the eternal life of God that's dwelling in them. And you can begin to see that even though this tribulation can press in on you sometimes, you can begin to have that tribulation turn into hope and joy because you can know that the spirit of the living God is living in your child. And that spirit will raise your child up unto glory and immortality just like it did Jesus. Hallelujah. And you can begin seeing it that way. And what that does is it turns your it, 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 it'll turn your sorrow into joy. You'll go from feeling weakness to feeling strong. Okay? That's how it works. And so what it would mean, your original question, I don't look to the flesh. When I feel weak, when I feel sorrowful, I don't look at what I can do with my flesh to take care of that. But I look to the word of truth God spoke in Jesus, and that takes care of it. Yes. That yeah. turns my sorrow into joy. Right. It takes my weakness and makes it strength. Yeah. It upholds me. It makes me feel like I can do all the things I never thought I could do before. It makes me know God's with me. It makes me know his life's in me. It makes me know that that, that sickness I see in my child can never conquer my child, but my child will conquer that sickness. Bring salvation. Do, do you see? Yes. Because many times, like in that kind of a situation, those things can wear on you. And you begin to feel like they're overcoming you. Right? And you feel like they're winning. I'm losing and it's winning. And you can begin to have that, that thing fill your imagination. And so all you need is for your imagination to be filled with what God's done in Jesus and how your child will overcome. Ain't nothing can stop it. Right. And, and then you begin praying for your child from that foundation. Right. Not from we lack, we need, but you pray from the foundation that you, you and your child possess a life inside of that mortal body that created the whole universe. <laughs> you have that life now. You have a life that conquered sin and death. You have it now. 
Yes. You're not trying to get it. You have it now. Yes. The sickness that's coming against your child and you, that sickness came against Jesus at the cross. And it looked like that sickness had won. And Jesus was laying in the grave. And then he came out of the grave. That life that pulled him out of the grave, that's the life you have now. That's the life that's dwelling in your child now. You see? And so when your heart can be filled with that in light of this, it will process through the tribulation and it won't be unto despair, but it will be unto joy. It won't be unto hopelessness, it'll be hope. It won't be unto sorrow, it'll be you'll be filled with joy. Right? And so it's all right to come together with God and have a cry. Sometimes and say, Lord, yeah. how long, man? Because <laughs> he doesn't despise you in your weakness. It says we have a compassionate high priest. What that means is Jesus tasted what that weakness feels like. Jesus is the word of life. Yes. He, he's never known death or darkness. I mean, he is eternal life. And he came and took all death upon himself. Do you think that caused some confusion? No, he, he felt it. He felt the confusion. But he processed the confusion through the Holy Spirit and came out of it with rest. And so when you feel confused or you feel beaten down or dejected, understand Jesus also felt that and he's God. So there's no shame in you feeling that. You can see God knows. And so you want to get an image of your heart of God saying, I know, me too. I felt that. I felt what it was like for the death and darkness to surround me. I felt what it was like to feel the accusation. I felt what it was like for death to come upon me. I know. Me too. Let's hug it out. You see, he'll start ministering. You'll start identifying with Jesus. And you'll start, Jesus knows. Jesus is with me. Now you start talking with Jesus. Now you start talking about what God's done in Jesus. Now your imagination be captivated with the word of life instead of the word of death. Now that starts processing through your darkness and your confusion. And it eradicates it from your soul and from your heart. And then you feel like a river of living water pouring out of you in the midst of this situation. And you can find yourself seeing even what isn't as it ought to be through the eyes of life. And you can find yourself strengthened with hope and strengthened with the strength of God. I hope that makes some sense.